My restless soul is calling out for you I listen Knowing every word you speak brings strength and life and truth There is no situation that's too difficult for you when the darkness comes, you are the light that guides us through. We place our trust in you, Jesus. We place our trust in you, Jesus. Certain days we know the fullness of your grace won't let us go. Oh, in these uncertain days we know the fullness of your grace won't let us go. So we'll stand, yes, we'll stand. We stand, yes we stand, so we'll stand, yes we'll stand, we stand, yes we stand.
Good evening and welcome to this Monday Thursday service. It's great that you are joining us here this evening. My name is Matt and I'm one of the pastors here at Tesford Baptist Church. Monday Thursday is the fifth day of Holy Week. The Holy Week is the week that leads up to Easter. There are two elements to the Monday Thursday service. Firstly, it's an opportunity for Christians to reflect and partake in communion. And secondly, because on the night um, of the Last Supper, Jesus washed the disciples' feet as an act of humility and service. Therefore, what we would often do would do the same thing. We would wash other people's feet. But due to the fact that we meet in virtually, this kind of brings some complications. So tonight, what we're going to do is just take a moment to, room, to share communion together. As we have communion together, we would also include a time of prayer, We'll have some song worship. Jim will lead us in a time of song worship. We'll hear from God's word, and then we will take a moment to share in communion with each other. Please don't worry if you don't have any bread or wine in the house. You can use whatever you can find, a water or cracker. It's not about what we eat or drink, but it's the symbolism behind it that matters. So if you're able to, as we will be doing communion together lately, in a moment, can I invite you just to take a moment to pause the video and grab yourself some wine, some grape juice, some water, some bread, some crackers, whatever it may be, um, so that we can take communion together as a church. Let's start off this evening uh, of our service by praying together. Shall we pray? Tonight, Lord, we want to take a moment to stop and to remember all that you did for us. We want to take a moment, Lord, to pause, to remember this last meal, to pause and reflect upon the sacrifice you made for us all. We want to pause and remember the pain that you would have suffered to give us a hope and to give us a future. May we never forget what you have done. In the name of Jesus, amen. Jim is going to lead us in a time of song worship. So I'm going to hand over to him. Thanks, Jim. So here I am 
to bow down Here I am to say that You're my God You're all together lovely All together worthy All together We just pray for Matt right now as he comes to bring your word, as he brings your word and as we reflect upon the Last Supper. Lord, would you speak to us, speak directly to our hearts, Lord, that you would bring fresh revelation to us through this passage, through your word, through this scripture. And Lord, as we reflect on all that you uh, did for us, as you went to the cross willingly for us, 
Lord, may we be grateful and thankful right now. Amen. Thanks, Jim, for leading us in a time of sung worship. We're currently in a series reflecting upon our King at the moment on a Sunday morning. We've already reflected upon how Jesus is the saving King, the innocent King. And Sunday, Chris talked about how he was the rejected King. The journey has already started on the way to Jerusalem. But where we land here this evening is the story that before all of this happened. Tonight, we're going to take a moment to reflect upon the Last Supper, the night before Jesus was killed for humanity. So we're going to start off by reading from Mark's Gospel, Mark chapter 14, verses 12 to 26. Hopefully it should be on the screen right now. This is what it says. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owners of the house he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened. And one by one they said to him, Surely, surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, he replied. One who dips his bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he gave them thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. He said to them, Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it, in the new, in the, drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the word of the Lord, and we love to hear God's word spoken out loud. Let me set the scene for you. At last, Passover festival arrives. The festival recalls the day 1,500 years before when the Lord God rescued his people from captivity in, England, in Egypt and led them out towards the Promised Land. Every year, his people, his people would pay tribute to that night. This is what God had told them to do. This was a national event. It was a night to remember what God has done. It was a night to remember the freedom he brought them so long ago. It was a night when the Jews would talk about the anticipation for when God will do it again. And here we see Jesus partake in this tradition. We see in the text, verse 15, it says this, He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. They were ready to have Passover meal together. This Passover meal consisted of unleavened bread and wine, bitter herbs, which recall the bitterness of slavery, and the special sauce whose ingredients also connect with captivity and freedom. Then there is the Passover lamb, which must be slaughtered after use, just as it was all those years ago. It was a Thursday night, by Jewish reckoning, where the new day gains at sunset. We believe it was the 15th day of the month Nisan, and before this day is out, 
the Lord Jesus will himself have died. Evening comes and Jesus arrives at the house, verse 17, with the rest of the party, it tells us. Often this festival will go on late into the night. So many thousands of families all over Jerusalem eating the various dishes in right particular order. At each stage, the head of the household would explain exactly what it means. At the beginning and the end of the meal, they would sing Psalm 113 to Psalm 118, known as what we call the Hall Psalms. Stage after stage of the meal is accompanied by words of blessing and prayer. And then, as Jesus is doing this Passover meal, we see, what well, the disciples saw, this unexpected bombshell. What happens is Jesus, in this moment, alters the narrative it will have taken the disciples massively by surprise. They listened intently as they reflected upon these powerful words that Jesus speaks. For years, these words would have remained the same. But over 2,000 years ago, this narrative changed. When Jesus lifted up the unleavened bread, he would have prayed and blessed it and then said this, Praise be you, O Lord, sovereign of the world, who causes bread to come forth from the earth. This is what we see in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. He would have broken it and then would have passed the bread around the room for each person to receive. But yet, the narrative changed. Suddenly, it wasn't about what happened 1,500 years ago. This time... Jesus says it's about him and what he is going to do. Verse 22 says this, While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Can you feel the shock moment? Can you sense the tension in the room? Can Jesus say that? Can, can, can he change the, the narrative? Wait, wait, what is he actually saying here? This is my body broken for you? Jesus in this moment is saying, the bread, this is going to be broken. And the bread symbolizes him. I wonder, as you study scripture, you would have known that Jesus already had predicted three times what was going to happen to him. But maybe in this moment, the disciples were starting to see that this was becoming a reality. Then, at the end of the meal, another change to the narrative. As the Passover meal has come to an end, the final cup is shared. The leader would take a cup of red wine, give thanks over it and pass it around. But once again, Jesus changes the narrative. Verse 23, he, he, then he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank from it. Verse 24, this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. If the broken bread portrayed violence. The wine symbolised that Jesus was going to die. His death was going to be violent and his death was going to be soon. All because
God so loved you. Jesus' death on the cross was a substitute for us. Jesus suffered so that we didn't have to. Jesus became sin on our behalf. Jesus took the punishment of sin so that we didn't have to. He separated himself so that we would never be separated. And I guess it brings to light what we read in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. And we share about this a lot. God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yet Jesus was forsaken on the cross. I, I think sometimes we can take for granted this. And I wanted to say that line again because I think it's really, really important. He separated himself so that you will never be separated from God. When Jesus says in verse 24, this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. He's saying that this death will bring a new covenant. And this new covenant is all about an inner transformation that cleanses us from all sin. We see throughout the breadth of the Old Testament talk about this, about how his forgiveness will mean that he will not remember our sin. How in Jeremiah 31, it talks about how God's word and will is in us. I will, put in, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. It is a, a, a new, about a new close relationship with God. I will be their God and they shall be my people. We read in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33. Because of, all, because of Jesus and what he did upon the cross, all our sins are instantly forgiven, as we read in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Because of Jesus, you have a peace and a joy that, nothing can be, that, that can't be taken away. Because of Jesus, we are close to God and in relationship with him. Because of Jesus, we have a purpose, glorifying God and enjoying fellowship with him. Because of Jesus, we are now in community. 1 John chapter 1 verse 7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Because of Jesus, we are given the Spirit of God to guide us, comfort us, and counsel us, and give us wisdom. Because of Jesus, our future is secure. Our fear of death is no longer there. We have a hope and a future. And I guess this is where I want to take a moment to stop and reflect. I don't know about you, but... There are many songs that remind me, that come to mind as we make our way through Holy Week. And as we land on Monday, Thursday into Good Friday, there's a song that just kind of gets me at the core. It's a song that you might know, and it's the lyrics that are written here. The song is this, this is Jesus in his glory. King of heaven, Dying for me. It is finished. He has done it. Death is beaten. Heaven beckons me. Greater love no one could ever show. Mercy so undeserved. Freedom I should not know. All my sin... All of my hidden shame died with him on the cross. Eternity won for us. This is Jesus. This is what he did for you and for me. Let us never forget that truth. Shall we pray? To the God of ages, we worship you here and now. 
who come before you and recognise you that you are far greater than we can fathom. And tonight, as we remember what your son did, allow us to approach your throne with grace and worship you, as you are worthy of our praise. As the psalmist writes, honour the Lord for the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in the splendour of his holiness. Amen. to say Jesus said these words, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. A couple of Sundays ago, Jim led us in communion, and he encouraged us to reflect upon the Lord's Supper from 1 Corinthians. And he spoke and mentioned what Paul quite clearly says, in the importance of examining ourselves before we approach the Lord's table. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 28, it says this, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. We've already alluded to this first, but in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says this, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let's take a moment to ask the Lord and confess to him the things that we have done to him. Let's take a moment and say sorry to God now. Thank you, Lord, for no matter what you do, you forgive us. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Before we break the bread, let's give thanks for the bread. Lord, as we take this bread, remember that you are the bread of life. You feed our souls, you nourish our hearts, and you give us substance to run the race before us. As we break this bread, Lord, we take a moment to reflect upon how your body was broken for us. How you loved us so much that you went to the cross. Help us to never forget that. In the name of Jesus. Amen. After Jesus had given thanks, he took the bread and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, if you want to pause the live video, we're going to take the bread and remember what Jesus did for us. Let's do that. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's remember the sacrifice Jesus made for us all. Let's drink together now. We praise you, God, for this time. Thank you that through your sacrifice and new covenant, we have a hope and a future. And may we go from here, showing that with our neighbours, for our words and deeds, send us now in the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit. May we live to be all that you have destined us to be. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to hand back over to Jim to lead us in our last song. Thank you for joining us this evening. And please do join us tomorrow morning at 10 for our Good Friday service. And then on Sunday, it is Resurrection Sunday, where we will rejoice and sing together that he is risen. We have one service on Sunday. It's at 10.30. We'd love for you to come and join us. Thanks, Jim.
eternal days on the mount of crucifixion fountains open deep and wide through the flood gates of God's mercy flow the vast and gracious tide Grace and love like mighty rivers poured in sense from above heaven's peace and perfect justice kissed and guilty world in love who is love will not remember Throughout heaven's eternal days Who is love will not remember And who can cease to sing his praise He can be forgotten throughout hell's eternal days throughout hell's eternal days throughout hell's eternal days You were the word at the beginning One with God the Lord most high Your hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you our Christ What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without. Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. And what could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my what a wonderful name it is Nothing compares to this What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise. 
praise of your glory for you are raised to life again you have no rival you have no is the name What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Amen, Lord, we do give you all the glory today. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. And Lord, we lift your name up today. We want to tell you that we love you, that we honor you, that we worship you with our lips, but also, Lord, with the resonance of our hearts tonight. Lord, would you be glorified in us and through us, we pray. Amen. Thanks, Jim. And so let's leave you with these final words. May the Father who so loved the world that gave his only son, bring you faith to his eternal life forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.